I have some analog units on my side here that I like to mix with, but manually recalling all the parameters on these units every time I load the mix session is such a waste of time for my workflow. But there's a very cool Cubase feature that I like to work with that helps me a lot, especially when working and mixing with analog gear. And it's not what you think. Hey, what's going on, my friend? The Chris Elim here from Mixdown Online. Hope you're doing well. Let's start this one up, talking about the way I like to mix with analog gear. I don't have lots of gear that I mix with, but the more I do, the more I like it. However, it does come with some of its downsides, and the recall time is one of them. And most of the time, I'm gonna have like these units uh, loaded on several different mixing projects, and I'm not necessarily using them the same way on every mixes. To the exception of my Tegler Cam, which is my main stereo bus compressor, I always do the same settings. It's always on my mix bus, so that one is not a problem. But for the rest of the gear, I manually have to recall all the parameters every time I load a mix session. And this Cubase feature helps me a lot. And there's also a very cool recall tool that I use on top of that, which I'm gonna show you later. But for now, let's jump in Cubase. Okay, I have my baseline right here. It's actually going through the uh, VTRC to begin with, then it goes down uh, to the uh, to MPX by Warm Audio, and it ends up into the EQP1A by stem audio to do so as far as my connections goes i go straight into external effects and in this case since the vtrc is the first unit this is the one i'm loading on my channel and then i just patch everything through my patch bay to go from the vtrc into the 2MPX, which goes then into the eqp1a then it comes back into cubase and this is what i get Now, I'm happy with that bass sound. What I'm gonna do after is to commit. And this is what is gonna save me lots of time the next time I open this session. I commit right away. And the feature I'm gonna show you is track versions. This is on the left zone of the channel, and you can see that I can create different track versions on a single track. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. But first, uh, I'm going to commit to the track and I'm going to bounce it back into my project with that analog processing applied. Okay, so I'm going to select my uh, event. I'm going to go up to edit, down to render in place, render settings, and this is where I'm going to just rename the file. So let's say base analog. All right. And I'm going to make sure that channel settings is the one selected. But before I do so, I'm going to bypass all the other plugins I have on that channel. I just want to commit to that analog processing and that's it. So only the VTRC in this case is active on that channel. So I'm going to go back uh, on top under edit, go down to render in place, render settings. All right, so it's named correctly and uh, keep a source event unchanged. I'm going to leave it as is. Click on render. Now it's going to bounce itself in real time because the signal physically goes out of Cubase, out of the sound interface into the, uh, the analog gear and then back into my sound interface and then back in Cubase. So that whole route needs to be in real time when bouncing with analog gear. Now render in place has done its job. Now I have a new base channel uh, with the analog processing applied to it. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, base uh, channel and under track versions, I'm gonna click that plus sign and that will create a new version. And it's gonna empty the track and create a new version. I'm gonna call this one analog. Okay, then I'm just gonna drag by keeping my finger on the command or control if you're on PC. I'm gonna drag and drop it straight into my original base channel so it's inside my uh, new track version. And I can go from the processed uh, analog channel to the unprocessed original base recording just by going from one uh, track version to another. Very cool. So this way I always have a backup of my original recording without processing if I want to make any changes later on. Okay, but by the meantime, I commit to that processing and I just forget about 
the analog gear from this point on. And then I can reactivate the rest of my plugin chain that comes after that analog processing in this case and bypass the hardware Cubase plugin that is going to my analog gear. And that's it. That is the processed signal. And that is the unprocessed signal that I always have access to. And if my analog gear was coming after some plugins, that can happen. In this case, the way I'm gonna bounce it is I'm gonna keep the processing of the previous plugins in the chain and commit to those plugins on top of the analog gear and just bypass the analog gear and those plugins after I have my committed track. Now, since I'm using my analog gear on several other mixes, I won't need to worry about having to recall all the parameters when I'm gonna reload this specific mix because I committed already. So that is a huge time saver as far as I'm concerned. Now you're probably gonna ask me, okay, what if you need to go back and just do some minor touch-ups and adjustments on your analog gear? for the bass track that you just mixed. What are you gonna do? Now, I'm gonna try to avoid getting to that point, so that's why I'm gonna make sure I'm happy with the sound to begin with before I commit to it. But if I need to get back to it, very simple. I'm just gonna reload the hardware plugin that I have here in Cubase, go back to my first track version, that is the unprocessed version, and then I'm gonna have to take the time to recall my parameters on my analog gear. And a cool tool that I use for that matter is Session Recall. Now, this is not sponsored whatsoever. I'm just showing you the tool that I uh, work with. Now, Social Recall is a very nice app that is free to begin with, and then you can just buy the layout of the analog gear you own. Now, on their website, there are several different device uh, you you can choose and buy a la carte, as we say, and add them to your collection. Now, in my case, the Warm Audio 2 MPX was not listed yet. So what I need to do in this case is just take a picture of that unit with all my parameters and load it straight into Session Recall. And there you go. Very well done. So it's an easy way for me to go and look at all the parameters that I can change also on the go if I'm doing some, uh, uh, some tweaks and stuff. It's very easy. It works a bit like a plugin, you know, but it's mainly to reference. So it has no sound going into that software. It's only to list the parameters of your analog unit when mixing. So it makes the recall process way easier. But again, I try to avoid that part because again, I don't like to recall my stuff, repatching everything. Most of the time, the committed version is the one I work with. Now, if you want to know how you can process your track with analog gear using Cubase Pro, just watch this video and you'll be good to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care and see you.